Hey guys, it's Matthew here once again, and got a bit of Diablo 4 action for you today with the Necromancer I've been leveling. Uh, it's the second character for the uh, full launch. I played a rogue to about 60, and then this Necromancer is currently about 62 or 3, um, but I want to show you some footage of the character in World Tier 3, uh, as he's just about to transition over to World Tier 4. So he's about level 59, 58, something like that and um, it's a bone necro so this is against a shava you can see the damage that comes in from me whenever i'm spending my entire energy bar um, uh, it's it's pretty noticeably going to be tanking the boss's hp and this is yeah roughly level appropriate etc uh, it seems like a pretty strong build for what it is so it's a bone spear necro i leveled it from level one as a bone spear all the way uh, you can pick up a legendary aspect for this build from a dungeon i think it was from one of the tier two dungeons and it uh, makes your bone spear um, have more like splinters on the comeback and do more damage, some shit like that, and it makes the Bone Spear pretty powerful. So it's not a very gear intensive build, it requires uh, one just basic legendary aspect from a dungeon, but obviously there's a lot to min max around and a lot of um, extra stuff you can do to make the build a lot better. And from what I can tell, there's some customizability for a couple of the skills that you can use to um, make a bit bit of decisions for your choices for the way you want to play a necro here uh, i haven't followed a guide or anything on this i don't even know all of the uniques or legendary powers out there for this type of build it's just what i've found so far put some stuff together and do want to share with you how to do it if you want to do the same um, so the gameplay is essentially running in and trying to make sure that your energy is at almost maximum which is going to be tough to do until much later on even around level 60 62 i'm still not quite there yet but it doesn't matter too much basically we are running around and using a generator to get a bit of uh, extra essence energy i don't remember what this um, necro stuff is called mana let's call it and then unload with a bone spear so you do have teeth or whatever you want on your left click and then using the bone spear to line up your enemies and have a really powerful hit going through them and then a few powerful hits coming on the way back we are using corpse tendrils to cluster the enemies together as should be kind of noticeable and um, it sucks all the enemies up into one central point stuns them makes them vulnerable and then there's a legendary power that gives you extra damage for when you do that as well so this is kind of going to be about the most sort of slower more meaningful gameplay you can have i'd say in an arpg and in this game and it has been pretty satisfying so i i played the rogue to about 60 and i've been liking this a lot more personally um just because it's a bit more methodical, it's a bit more rewarding. This character feels more powerful to me as well. Um, and this is the level 70 capstone dungeon to go onto world tier 4, and I'm doing it at level 59. And it's a pretty big uh, cruise for the most part. So I was very much ready for world tier 4 um, long before even the last few upgrades um, near level 60 and you can see that we hit really hard when the lineup of our damage happens uh, quite commonly one-shotting or two-shotting um, elites it's just all about getting the setup for your corpse tendrils and having enough energy essence whatever um, to actually capitalize on your damage it is a bit of a tricky situation to solve all of your energy um, costs because the game doesn't really let you do that until you've got the right stuff and the right pieces together and it is just something you got to work away at uh this is the boss of the level 70 capstone dungeon my rogue had a much tougher time on this at a lower level by a couple of levels but um yeah this character just absolutely obliterated it uh once you've got the lineup happening of the um, damage so you need to hit them with a corpse tendrils you need to have some corpses around and then bone spear your way to victory after this point started doing world tier 4 at level 60 and um, just trying to fish for upgrades my character by the point that i'm going to show you in game hasn't really upgraded much it's still it's like basically 
mostly sacred level gear. Uh, you can notice through some of this gameplay that the temporal bubble thing, like this big bubble thing, um, is pretty bad for this build. It's one of the worst um, mob type uh, affixes because the bone spears that come back, those shards that come back that do a lot of our damage, uh, just don't re-enter the zone if you are standing inside that bubble. Um, and you need to be standing inside that bubble to damage them. So you're either next to a wall to be able to shard those um, splinters back at them, or you just lose like, I don't know, 60% of your damage, something like that. So we are doing some okay uh, clearing in tier four at this stage. I don't really know exactly how this build goes um, further on, but I've been told by the people that have been playing Bone Necro since day one, they're starting to crit for like one, two million, and they are still clearing uh, level 100, well, don't know level 100, but like really high tier um, nightmare dungeons at level 80 or whatever it is and uh, doing some really good damage so it still keeps scaling this is just my humble little build and attempt at it and uh, I do want to go ahead and show you how I've put the character together and what you need to do to sort of um, replicate the success I've been having because uh, I think this necro is a pretty strong build um, not too many people are doing necros like this I don't think uh, it's been a pretty strong build it's been very fun uh, it's it's kept me playing d4 quite happily uh, making upgrades making my nice uh, methodical slower paced gameplay and we can speed it up it's just a matter of um, getting to the right upgrades uh, and it will get a bit faster it will be a bit more smooth but for now it's been good it's been fun it's a pretty strong character and let me go ahead and show you how, what i've done so here's my character uh level 63 bone zone dirty trash um now level 63 so once you're in 60 plus you can start upgrading to ancestral gear and i've got a few little upgrades here or there but it's it's kind of meaningless uh anyway the point being the build itself the character necromancer revolves um this one currently revolves around uh bone spear so it's this skill over here conjures a bone spear from the ground dealing bunch of damage pierces three enemies we spec um you can have a choice here but we spec into enhanced bone spear so it breaks into three shards um and then bone spear has a bit of extra crit and then two additional shards if um it also crits and then with the legendary power that we have here um that as i said you can just get from one of the dungeons bone spears primary attack makes enemies hit beyond the first vulnerable for three point whatever seconds uh, bone shards from the bone spear deal a bunch of extra damage to vulnerable enemies and pierce them and um it ends up being really powerful that's you before you get it it's still fine but once you get it you notice that the um, shards coming back do a lot of damage and then you have really good clear as well as really good single target uh that is pretty much the only build enabling thing i'd say everything else is kind of an enhancement but um, I'm also using something that makes the corpse tendrils um, give you a lot of extra damage. So a lot of extra crit here, as well as extra crit damage. And this build ends up scaling around a lot of crit, crit damage, vulnerable damage, that sort of thing. And um, once I got this, that's when I got corp ten corpse tendrils into the build. Like I said, it's just something that pulls all the enemies in, um, requires a corpse though. And then um, it also gives them vulnerab uh, vulnerability. And uh, it slows, stuns enemies. It's a pretty powerful setup tool and um, very fun to use once you get it going. The other things are kind of luxury based and you figure out what you want. You can have a golem, you can have minions, you can use a curse, not use a curse, use an ultimate, not use an ultimate, etc. Um, currently, I am also running with... Uh, Corpse Explosion at a max range, but um, I will maybe be unspecking it. So I was using it as kind of an additional source of damage in the build because um, you leave a bunch of corpses behind, you use Corpse Explosion, and it generates you some extra um, essence thanks to this node here. Consuming a corpse generates essence uh, and also gives you some damage. So I was just using this as an additional source of essence gain um, for quite a while. Now that my essence gain is a bit more figured out, I don't really need this and it doesn't do too much damage since I don't have 
any plus levels on it anymore but i was using it with the extra radius and the damage over time because um, it is kind of handy let me see if i can show you real quick it is kind of handy to help during some of the events where you lay down a lot of these and there's going to be a lot of damage over time happening all over the ground and during some of these events um, monsters that are just a bit weaker but keep spawning will just constantly kill themselves um, to your corpse explosion so you can see there's a couple of corpses and they also stack up damage wise so you can see it start to tick for decent amounts but um i don't have any levels to it anymore when i did so i'm probably going to spec out of it soon but the point is for a lot of the campaign a lot of the playthrough a lot of this character's um existence it was pretty damn good having uh just lots of the ability to stack lots of corpse explosions and um take care of little shitty monsters so then i've also got decrepify and it goes into these two passes to um, have lucky hits uh reduce cooldowns and it is noticeable that it's going to reduce the cooldown of your corpse tendrils so you can spam spam corpse tendrils quite a bit more um, i have corpse tendrils over here just level one at the moment uh specking for these two things and i might level it up a bunch so that uh all it does is make the cooldown a bit lower it does a bit of damage but it's going to be meaningless so we might just level that instead of that uh so that the cooldown becomes lower and then currently I've also taken uh, Bone Storm as an ultimate. It's pretty bad, but it just it's a buff stick at this point. So with the next two points, um, it gives you damage reduction and extra crit. And then the um, ultimate passive that I've taken is the obvious one for bone skills. Um, deal more damage once you have damage above a certain amount of essence. So that's why we constantly want, want to be at a high amount of essence, but it's tough to get to that point once we do i think that's when the builds are going to really take off and we're kind of getting there as far as the small passes have taken i have sacrificed all of my minions uh because we don't really need them they don't really do much for this type of a build and um using these passives here and here and then using all of these small um bone passives i have the extra fortify spawn from corpses and stuff uh, i have the Close enemies take 6% more damage and deal 9% less damage. You can instead go more of a range thing, but there's just not a lot you can do against enemies being close to you a lot of the time in this game um, or currently with this setup. So I've just decided to take less damage from close enemies from a lot of different sources, uh, use the corpse things here and use the lucky damage um, generate some corpses. Uh, otherwise, the generator, kind of up to you, but bone splinters is typically the best one with... Um, bit of extra essence and a uh, bit of vulnerability if we need it so we do have vulnerability there we do have vulnerability uh coming from uh the corpse tendrils but if you need more then you can just spec into the bone spear vulnerable as well which um i think i had early on but got rid of eventually um the paragon board it's going to be kind of customizable entirely so I don't, I don't know if this is something you're supposed to do or you know copy in any way shape or form basically just got both of these um got extra minion non-minion damage etc a bit of extra range on stuff and then the first legendary power we're going for is bone graft uh because that just seems to be the obvious play so we get a bunch of extra um, damage and stuff and then we're also going for the essence on kill and once we get this um specced in essence massive uh max essence and essence on kill that's when things start to feel a lot more automated and you start to um kind of uh, have a much nicer gameplay play style um yeah so that's basically the build so then uh found deathless visage you you know find one of these for bone spear and it's pretty good but i don't have um too much proof that it does a whole lot it turns your bone spear into these little explosion things going off sometimes and they do some damage, but they're nowhere near as much as the actual, like, bone spear mechanic. But they do some additional damage, and it does help out. And it's a nice hat otherwise. So we are running that. Uh, I've still got most of my gear to actually kind of figure out, but some damage reduction there using the Ossified Essence um, boost. So it makes it even better, that final passive. Um, damage reduction from armor. This is nothing still. This is nothing still. Uh, this is supposed to kind of help our resource gen 10% chance to generate 
50 essence when hitting vulnerable enemy with bone skills but it's on the lucky hit and i don't have any extra lucky hit just the base so it's a bit sporadic it helps sometimes but there's another one that gives us essence on corpse tendril use basically and uh, i might do that instead in the end but so far that's what i'm using and then also like i said that one uh you do want the bone spear thing on your weapon because then it's going to amplify and do even more bone spear damage i haven't found like a real good one yet so this is what i'm at and it goes really hard uh and i think that's about it right i don't think there's anything else book of the dead actually yep uh, i sacrificed um these for crit we then go back and the mages, I sacrificed these for vulnerable damage and the golem I sacrificed for 30 crit damage. Um, it's debatable though, I really liked having a blood golem, so just having a blood golem might be better, especially instead of something like bone storm, it doesn't do too much and um, it's a bit of a just oh shit button or a power spike every now and again. Uh, so it's pretty customizable, I'd say, for what you want to do, um, but um, yeah. We run around, we decrepify, we slow things, we corpse tendrils, and you can see that the gameplay is uh, decent, and I'd say kind of satisfying. I don't know if we want to do any of this, eh? So anyway, um, pretty nice build, I think. Should go the distance, should get us to much higher tiers. I only just started World Tier 4, and it's been decent it's still in need of plenty of upgrades but um the damage is going to keep going and from what i hear it goes pretty damn high so that'll do it for now hope you guys enjoyed the little video hope you're having fun diablo 4 if you're playing it um bone spear necro get you some thank you very much for watching see you guys next time